This lesson is how to explain how to use stoichiometry when you have a limiting and excess reactant. In other words, when the reactants present before the reaction happens are not present in stoichiometric amounts. In other words, one reactant runs out and the other one is left over. And this is a very common occurrence. Most of the experiments that we've done so far this year actually do have a limiting reactant and an excess reactant. So what you need to do while you watch this video is this is designed to go along with problems 1 and 3 on your worksheet 9-3. That is your homework for this weekend. So please have the worksheet 9-3 out as well as your ion chart, a calculator, and something to write with. When you have a stoichiometry problem in which you are working with a limiting or an excess reactant, the problem is going to give you the starting amounts of both of your reactants. And in this case, we're going to start out with a simpler problem where, where we are given the starting mole amounts of both the reactants in the problem. And so for this problem, we are given 0.5 moles of aluminum that react with 0.72 moles of iodine to produce aluminum iodide. And you have the balanced chemical equation here. And what we do here is we take those starting mole amounts, and because they are already mole amounts, we can put them right in the chart. And so we are going to put our 0.5 moles of aluminum and our 0.72 moles of iodine. And we're going to put those both those two starting amounts into the chart. The next thing that we have to do is probably the trickiest part of all of these problems, and that is to figure out which element, in this case, because these are elements reacting, which element is going to run out and which one is going to have some left over by the time the reaction is complete. And so in order to do that, we use our basic process of stoichiometry where we take a starting amount and we go up and divide by the coefficient of the starting amount, go over and multiply by the coefficient of the other reactant, and then this amount that we calculate, we would put on the change line. And this is where a major difference comes in our calculations from different from what we did in the stoichiometry problems before. So in this case, I'm going to choose, I'm going to say, I think aluminum is going to run out first. So I just picked aluminum. And so I'm going to assume that all the aluminum is going to be reacted. And what I'm going to be doing is figuring out how much of the iodine would react. And so what I do is I take my 0.5 moles of aluminum and I go up and I divide by 2 and then I go over and I multiply by 3 to find out how much iodine would react if I reacted all of the aluminum. So you take 0.5 divided by 2, that's 0.25 and then you multiply that by 3, and that is 0.75, and that would go on this line right here, 0.75. Then what we would do is we would subtract those. And if you notice, if you subtract those, we get a negative number of 0.03. Now think about this. Is it possible to have a negative amount of moles? No, it's not possible to do that. So if you do this calculation, and this is what you end up with, you know that you have to change what you've done. And it's actually not the aluminum that runs out, but rather the iodine that runs out. So what we're going to do is we're going to erase what we did. This is the joy of these programs that you can actually erase. Oops, I don't want to erase my starting amount. I'm going to erase the calculations that I did, and I'm going to start over again, but this time I'm going to start with the iodine. And I'm going to say, okay, 
starting with the iodine, I'm going to assume that the iodine runs out and the aluminum is going to have some left over. So I do the same process, but this time I start with iodine and I go up and I divide. So I'm going to divide 0.72 by 3 and then I go over and I multiply by 2. And I come up with a number that is 0.48 and I'm going to put that underneath the aluminum. Because what that represents is the amount of aluminum that gets used up as I use up all of the iodine. So if I'm using up all of the iodine, then we're going to get rid of all of the iodine. And that's going to end up being zero. And then we're going to subtract the amount of aluminum and we get 0 0.02 moles of aluminum left over. So you can see now when I've done this calculation that you have zero left over of the iodine and you have a positive amount or 0.02 moles of aluminum left over. So that means that the limiting reactant in this reaction is the iodine because that's the one that runs out and that's the one that has nothing left over at the end of the problem. So then the next thing that we would do is we would try to calculate how much product we get. This is done based on the starting amount of the limiting reactant because once the limiting reactant is gone, you can't make any more product. The reaction stops. So then we're going to take our starting amount again of the iodine. We're going to go up and we're going to take the 0.72 and divide by 3. And then we're going to go over here and we're going to multiply again by 2. And that's going to be our amount of product. So remember with products we start with 0 and we add, and this is going to be the 0.48. And so we end up with 0.48 moles of aluminum iodide as our product. Here's another example of a problem, which is a more common example of what you might see. And the difference here is that in this problem, number three on your worksheet, uh, we start with gram amounts of the two product, of the two reactants. So we have some extra steps in here. We have to convert from grams to moles before we can find out what our limiting reactant is. So we have eight grams of calcium and we're going to convert that to moles and the molar mass of calcium is 40.08 grams and that gives us 0.2 moles of calcium. And so we can go ahead and put that up in the chart, 0.2 moles. Then we go down and we do the same thing for oxygen. And we have 20 grams of oxygen. And remember this is O2. So the molar mass of O2 is 32 grams per mole. And we get 0.625 moles of oxygen. So we're going to put that in the chart under the oxygen. Now, think about this. Which one do you think is going to run out? Calcium has 0.2 moles. Oxygen has 0.625. But we, take, we need two calciums for every oxygen. So we need more calcium, and we're starting with less. So I'm going to assume that it's the calcium that's going to run out. And so I'm going to start with the calcium, and I'm going to calculate how much oxygen would get used up. So I'm going to start with my 0.2. I'm going to go up and I'm going to divide by 2. And then I'm going to go over and I'm going to multiply by 1. And so what I'm actually going to use up of the oxygen is 0.1 moles. So if I subtract those two, I get a positive number. And so that means that oxygen is going to have some left over when the reaction is done and that calcium ends up being our limiting reactant, and so that's all going to get used up, and it's going to end up with zero. So then we can say that the one that runs out is our limiting reactant, and so that's going to be calcium. And so then what we have left to do is some other calculations that are going to be on the next slide. So I want you to, hopefully you have filled out 
the chart on the worksheet as you've been going through this problem with me, so you can refer to that as I go to the next slide and explain the other calculations that need to be done. Now we just need to figure out how much product we're going to get in moles, because we'll need to use that for later on in our calculations. So again, remember that it is the limiting reactant that determines how much product is made. So if we start with 0.2 moles of calcium, and its coefficient is 2, and the coefficient for calcium oxide is 2, then aren't we going to make the same amount of calcium oxide as we started with in the calcium? So we are going to make 0.2 moles of calcium oxide. So what we do is we take the 0.2 moles we started with, go up, divide by 2, go over, multiply by 2, and we get up with the same number. So we have 0.2 moles of product made. Okay, now that we have the chart filled out, there are uh, three more questions that are typically asked in these problems. The first one is that people are usually interested in gram amounts, and so they want to know how much of the excess reactant is left over in grams. And so we're going to take our mole amount that was left over that we calculated in the chart, which was 0.525 moles, and we're going to convert that back to grams of oxygen. Remember that it's O2, so it's 32 grams of oxygen. And we end up with 16.8 grams of oxygen left over after the reaction is complete. The other thing is to calculate the amount in grams of the product that is made in, from this reaction mixture. And so if you recall from the chart, we produced 0.2 moles of calcium oxide. And we're going to convert that to grams using the molar mass of calcium oxide, which is 56.08 grams and we get 11.22 grams of calcium oxide produced. And then the final question is a percent yield question. And it says that if you, if 10.75 grams of calcium oxide is actually formed, what is the percent yield for this reaction? So this is actually formed, so 10.75 grams is our actual yield. So we're going to take that and we're going to divide that by our theoretical yield, which is the 11.22 grams we calculated using stoichiometry. And then we're going to take that and multiply it by 100 to get a percent, and we end up with 95.8%. So there you have two examples, one starting with moles and one starting with grams. What you need to do now is if you're not sure about how to do these steps or you want to relook at this video, you can certainly re-watch this video. You need to do on your own, using this video as a guide, problems number two and number four on worksheet 9-3. Good luck.